Big Cat here, Paws Up! And this is my landing page for BUSR. BUSR is the hottest new sports betting partners, home of the exclusive double down deposit within 24 hours of your initial deposit. Whether it's the first basket, first kick, or whether it's the first pitch, BUSR has you covered. Sign up now with the official sports betting partner, home of the double down deposit, 24 hours after your initial deposit. Seeky, for all your ticketing events, from sporting to concert guidings, SeatGeek has you covered. They even conveniently color-coded each ticket on their website from amazing to worse, so you can easily know which are the best deals. SeatGeek, the smart way to buy. Save $20 off your next ticket purchase with the promo code KeyPoundingTV. Hey everybody, I'm your host at Granny Gato, also known as the Big Cat, my cool cat, put your balls up if you're rocking with the Big Cat. Today, we're to talk about Carolina Panthers head coach, Matt Rule. Is it time to move on from him? We're going to take a look back over his career and philosophy, and we're just going to find out is it time to part ways. But before we do that, let me go ahead and start by giving a special shout out to our sponsor, BUSR, the number one sporting bet website. 100% bonus on the first deposit up to $1,000 plus 25 casino chips. Any amount deposited to new users' accounts upon sign up will equal up to $1,000 max. BUSR, bet with confidence. Seeky. SeatGeek, the smart way to buy. For all your ticketing events, from sporting to concert outing, SeatGeek has you covered. They even conveniently color code each ticket on their website from amazing to worse, so you can easily know which are the best deals available. SeatGeek, the smart way to buy. Save $20 off your next purchase with the promo code KeepPoundingTV. KeepPoundingTVShop.com for custom Panthers apparel and Panthers Uncensored podcast apparel. Now, we have to look at Matt Rule's career through a microscope here, man. Right? We got to take it under a fine notch. I don't believe in bashing the guy just for the hell of it. I know in Panther Nation he's not the most popular guy, but I like to give guys the fair shot. I gotta give I gotta give him a fair shot here. Matt Rule should not be judged on whether or not he's a good man or not a good man. We're talking about strictly from a coaching aspect. I don't care if you're a good guy or not. We like results. <laughs> That's what the world is based off, not off emotion. Since Matt Rule was hired, he's been 10 and 23. If you're keeping record, that's a .303 win percentage. Not very good. His combined college record as a head coach was 47 and 43, above 500, .522 slightly. And he was 1 and 2 in bowl games. Not bad coming in. Now, I will say this right here. When I look at his resume, I struggle to find his identity. It's not a coincidence that my, yours, and our Carolina Panthers don't have identity because his, his resume doesn't scream, I'm a proficient in one area. Back in 1998, he was a volunteer assistant with Penn State. He also was an Albright linebackers coach for the Albright College. In 1999 to 2000, he was the Buffalo's defensive line coach, the college team. In UCLA 2001, he was a D-line coach. In 2002, he was Western Carolina special team and linebackers coach. 2003-2004, associate head coach, special team slash linebackers coach. In 2005, associate head coach, running game coordinator, special teams and linebackers coach. So from 2002 to 2005, he was with Western Carolina. 2006, he moved on to Temple as the D-line coach. 2007, Temple's quarterbacks coach and recruiting coordinator. 2008-2010, offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach for Temple. 2011, offensive coordinator, tight end, and recruiting coordinator for Temple. 2012, he was assistant offensive line coach for the New York Giants. And then, of course, 2013 through 2016, he was Temple head coach. And in 2017 to 2019, he was Baylor's head coach. And now the current Carolina Panthers head coach. When I look at this resume, I don't see his philosophy at all. A little bit of D-line coach, a little bit of linebackers coach, a little bit of quarterbacks coach. There's nothing like he's prolific in. And the reason why that's 
important is because if you don't have an identity as a head coach, more than likely your team is not. Now, yeah, you can say we're a defensive team. We're, we're ranked second, you know, or we were ranked second last year. But that, I give credit to Phil Snow for that. Phil Snow put that together. Nobody's going to confuse Matt Rule as a guru of any kind, whether it's offense or defense. But Phil Snow has a track record dating back to Baylor up and making really good defenses. So we can't, we can't take that away from him. Now, with that being said, the best way to judge a man is production. And if you really want to ask yourself, what, what has Matt Rule brought to the National Football League? Now, we rave and we rant. David Tepper said he looks like me, he smells like me, he tastes like me, and all this other good stuff. But when I ask you, how many people under his belt have made it to the National Football League? I'll do you one better. How many people under his belt are in the top 100 right now? I can count on my hands how many. Probably about one. That's Hassan Riddick. Now, he was with Temple from 2013 to 2016. Let's see how many players he put in the NFL. You got Evan Rodriguez, Tahir Whitehead, Tavon Young, Matt Ioannidis, Tyler Makovich. Now, with that being said, none of those guys are in the top 100 when it comes to best players in the league. Robbie Anderson didn't get drafted and P.J. Walker didn't get drafted. To, we, to hear Whitehead's not in the top 100, Matt Ioannidis is not in the top 100, and the other gentlemen are not. Now, why are you, why are you doing this, Big Cat? Why are you saying that? Because at the end of the day, you have to look at what Matt Rule brings to the table. If he's such a motivator, if he's such a, 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 a guy that can get guys to run through walls and play above their talent, then it will show. It'll show. It'll show that, you know, your coaching has long-term ramifications on people. You always talk about the great Nick Saban, you know what I mean? And how players always say, man, when I was playing with Alabama, that was harder than the NFL. You hear players that are in the top 100, you hear players that are under his tree come back and say, man, I thank God or I thank Nick Saban for doing this or doing that or making me work this hard. You always hear them come back and give him his credit. Not only do they give him his credit, they produce while doing it. It's one thing to have a good name because people like you. There's another thing to have a good name because you're good and you produce and, and, and it shows results. All right? So I think a lot of people, when they, when they speak of Matt Rule, it's because he's a friendly guy. And there's nothing wrong with being a friendly guy. But at the end of the day, your feelings don't, don't, don't you know, you can't pay light bills with your feelings. You don't win games with your feelings. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work that way. Let's continue on where, let's take a look at Baylor. What exactly did he put in the NFL at Baylor? He was a head coach from 2017 to 2019. Kyle Fuller and Jalen Hurd. One's a receiver. Now listen, none of those guys are in the top 100 as well. Nobody's mistaking those guys for game busters at, uh, at all either, respectfully. They're, you know, they made it to the National Football League. So you're talking about a total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, Seven players. <laughs> now, mind you, this, these are doing his best years. He had two years in Baylor. He had two years at Temple or three years at Temple. Seven players made it to the National Football League, drafted-wise. Drafted. You know what I mean? And if you want to add Robbie and PJ because those guys went undrafted, that's nine players. Doesn't sound like a hell of a motivator. Doesn't sound like <laughs> his methods were able to loom on. It sounds like the, the people that did make it, Seemed like those were guys had enough talent to get there. But, again, I'm not going to mistake either one of these guys for, like, game busters. I'm not going to do that, all right? Now, the problem with Matt Rule is this. It's simple. I don't think he's a bad guy. I don't really think he's a bad guy. I really think it's the fact that he wants to be liked instead of respected. Just because you're liked doesn't mean you're respected. Let's not get it twisted. And yes, there is a case where you can be respected and liked at, at the same time. I'll put it to you like this. When you hear stuff in the media from Matt Rule about wanting everybody on the team to have a friendly competition between Baker Mayfield 
and, and, and Sam Darnold and how you want everybody to look at that as professionalism. You're in a fight for your job. You're 10 and 23 in the National Football League. A little fire under your ass ain't going to hurt. So if you're going to be on a hot seat, then you need to make those guys feel it. You need to make Sam Darnold feel it. You need to make Baker Mayfield feel it. So if there are some flare-ups during the quarterback during the quarterback competition, you should welcome it. As long as they don't take the, uh, the focus away from the ultimate uh, goal, which is winning. The ultimate goal is to win. But it's hard to win without passion. I don't want robots out there. I want guys with emotion. I want guys with passion to fight and compete. It's almost, with this guy, he wants to control the narrative so much. He wants to be liked. The one thing that you'll never confuse Bill Belichick with is respect and liked. Respect is, you know, getting up in the morning, doing your job, even when you don't like it. Respect is making a hard decision. Respect is putting your best foot forward. Your respect is not lying to people. Respect is being brutally honest with players. Respect is telling you're not it. Don't waste my time. Don't BS around. Don't go to the media. Stop going behind closed doors and patting guys on the back and telling them it's okay and we're going to make it fair and fuck all that. It's simply about producing, production. But instead of that, you know what I mean? I'll tell you this. Matt rules more into being a light guy. I look at it. I see him in the press conference. I see him in the media smiling and, you know, Bill Belichick doesn't do that. Bill Belichick is a, is, is a hard ass. <laughs> he gives you what you need and if you don't follow it, you're out. You're not, the, you get cut. And people may not like him per se. He may not be the the best for an interview. He may not, not necessarily, necessarily be the coach that you can hang out with and be your best friend. But the thing about Bill Belichick is, it's his way or the highway. Because he believes in his method. He believes in his philosophy. He's, he believes that I can put you in the best position to win. And that doesn't mean if you're a superstar whether you're a five-star college recruit, whether you're undrafted, he doesn't care because he believes in his method. He's not trying to please you. He knows his method works. But what here is almost seeming like, think about this. No other college coach. Think about this. Think about this. If Matt Rule was really a good coach, why are you bringing in everybody you're associated with from college coaches to college players, the people that played up under you? Why? Why? Because it's hard to get anybody else to buy into that shit. Nobody believes you. You need more people, Jay-Z said. And since you want to quote Jay-Z, <laughs> you need more people. Because it's easier to get people you dealt with in the past to buy into your, to your philosophy or whatever you want to call it versus strangers. It's easier to get younger people. Do you, do you wonder why Matt Rule came in and stripped this team down of all the older veterans to younger people? Because it's easy to get them to buy into the college practices and the routines and rituals that he believed worked. You can't get no old-ass veteran, grown-ass veteran, grown-ass man to come in there and, and say, hey, man, look, I want you to go run the DBO board. <laughs> Don't beat ourselves board in, <laughs> you know? After, after you score a touchdown, don't reach the ball across the goal line. Don't dance. And <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? That that kind of crap is is trivial, man. You know, and you and you wonder why we can't have key free agents come here. You know, you'll have guys that's out for the bag, no doubt. If I'm not mistaken, Stephen Weatherly was on record for saying, if you want to get a bag for free, go to Carolina. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's on record with that. So, the free agents that do come here, it's strictly for bag purposes only. No one's looking to come here to come back. I mean, think about this. We had Stefan Gilmore, hometown kid. Hometown kid. Think about that, man. His career is winding down. He don't want defensive player of the year. He don't want Super Bowls. The last thing you want to do is play for your hometown, man. That's a special thing. And he left after one year. Carlos Dunlap, another one, hometown, came in here. I don't know what happened with the physical. I don't know if it was money, whatever. It wasn't motivating enough for him to stay. And the reason why is because, listen, Matt Rule stinks of mediocrity. 
He stinks of downright mediocrity because he wants to be a liked guy. You know what I mean? Nothing about him says we respect you from a production standpoint. Nothing. Nothing. I'll give you a quick little story here. I don't know if you guys are into the military, but as a military sergeant that everyone hates, I mean, they hate this guy's guts, but he's a highly decorated military sergeant, been on three, four tours. But the reason why people respect him is because they know if my son or daughter is under his company, he's going to bring them home. He has the highest return rate far as, you know, not having fatality, fatalities in his company out of any sergeant in, 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 in the military. So the thing is, though, he yells, he cusses, he screams, he drills, he PTs. He does all of that. People, man, why he talk to me that way? Why we, why we got to do all these drills? Blah, 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 blah. But people know at the end of the day, his company has the highest return rate of all of the other companies. Now, you may not like him. He may not be the guy that you want to go out and hang out with, but people respect him because of that factor. And until we find a, a captain or a coach that can come in here and lead men with his production base, with his philosophy, securing his, his, his scheme, then we're going to continue to lose. We're going to continue to fight. We're going to continue to do things such as have friendly competitions. There's a reason why the quarterback rotation has always been an open door under his watch. I mean, bad decision after bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. Indecisiveness from indecisiveness from indecisiveness. You cut Cam Newton when he was still when he when he was coming off his injury, looked like he was healing back up. Then you turn around, sign him back. <laughs> you get Teddy Bridgewater based off of five games, then you let him go. Your first year, you come here, you hire all rookie staff and all people you know. You hire a passing game coordinator and Joe Brady. Just, I mean, at some point, you got to ask yourself, when are, you, when are we going to stop the pain? When are we going to stop the pain? There never was no plan. Our owner said Rome wasn't built in one day when neither was common sense. <laughs> and it shows. <laughs> At some point, man, we just got to cut ties from Matt Rule. He may be a good guy. You may like him. But, look, this guy's leading you to nowhere. There's only so much motivation you can do for these young guys. All right? And listen, when, when it comes to Ron Revere, Ron Revere was a guy that was well-respected. And he was able to produce. I, I, like to, I like to differ. I like to say that he rolled Cam Newton's coattail. He rolled Cam Newton into the ground. But, hey, he produced, I guess. <laughs> if you want to be honest, he produced. The only thing that got Ron Rivera caught up was when he when he was respected, he didn't play the rookies. He didn't play the younger guys. And at some point, you got to ask yourself, hey, man, do I want to be morally correct? Not morally correct, but do I want to have my – I think his ego kind of got in the way. You remember he won Coach of the Year coming off the Super Bowl year? you got to ask yourself. Do I really want to sit here and say I'm loyal to my veterans to where I got a really talented young one-year guy or rookie guy that who can play in my lineup? And I think that was his biggest mistake. That was the reason why Ron Rivera got out of here. If Ron Rivera had enough sense to put some younger guys in there along with those veterans, he'd probably still be here. So respect is not all you need. You still got to have a, a talent and a, and a hell of a philosophy, but that's how. That's one way where it can backfire on you. But nonetheless, I mean, as far as treating men right, as far as executing the philosophy on defense, again, he was with the 85 Bears. So, yeah, man, he, he definitely was respected in that locker room. At the end of the day, man, Matt Rule is a good guy. I truly believe he's a good guy. Maybe even a great guy. Maybe you can have coffee with him, play, play golf or whatever. But... At the end of the day, it's not about his feelings or not about him being a good or bad guy. It's about results. As long as he's continuing to be the head, Carolina Panthers head coach, I, I can't see it happening. I think you're going to have some moments where we're going to ride the highs and then it's going to be right back to being low again. The bottom line is he wants to be liked. He's worried about his image 
instead of winning. And that is not alleged. That is fact. He's, he's, his perception of what he's being portrayed in the media and the newspaper and social media means the world to him. I know that. It means the world to him. He, You know what I mean? He can play it off like it doesn't bother him. I mean, he even acknowledged it during the fan fest. There was a fan that was heckling Matt Rule. He actually took time to stop and say, man, you see that guy up there? He's heckling me right now. Why Why even give him that energy? Why even give them that sound bite? Because your image means everything to you. Let your record speak for yourself. Let your record speak for your image. Let your production speak for who you are as a man. But, you know, I don't see it happening. And um, fortunately, y'all, we're stuck with him and, Maybe this is on his way out, man. I, I I would never wish bad on nobody. I hope he turns it around. I hope he shows the world that, hey, I can't produce at this level. But, uh, you know, this remains to be seen. I'm your host, Grande Gato, also known as The Big Cat. My cool cat, put your paws up. If you rock with The Big Cat, get in the comment section, man. Let me know. Is it time to move on from Matt Rule? Does Matt Rule have a problem with not being liked? Is he more worried about being liked instead of producing? How do you feel about that? Under Matt Rule's watch, he only put nine players in the NFL, and that's drafted and undrafted, while he was at Baylor, while he was at Temple. I'm not talking about the players that got drafted after he left. I'm talking about the while he was there. So you tell me, man, is he really a good coach? And why does it why is it the fact that nobody wants to come here? Why is it the fact that we got all rookies and young players here? Why don't we have a young veteran team? Why, why don't we have veteran teams to, to go with these young players? Do you ever see Matt Rule getting this thing right? Make sure you subscribe, download the podcast on Spotify, Apple, Amazon Music, and the whole nine. Let's get up out of here, y'all. Let the church say, pause up. Keep pounding. Carolina on top. Forever, baby.